From the best ancient city looting strats to getting infinite XP here are 39 ways to get super rich in Minecraft. If you're still using oak acacia or wood, you're a massive noob use bamboo. Instead, this is because bamboo is wood, but on steroids, how you may ask, well, bamboo grows super fast. And the best part, you can farm. These almost instantly with just a stone sword. All the bamboo is mine weight. Maybe I should just buy wood from a villager instead. There are quite literally thousands of duplication glitches in Minecraft. But one of these is beyond overpowered. All you have to do is place fences below an end portal and drop a gravity block from three blocks above the portal. Unfortunately, though, Mojang hates us having fun since this only existed in Java. 1.19. Wait, what if I do this with this villager? Trade is so incredibly overpowered. You won't believe it. Exists. If you have a villager who trades emeralds for wheat in a desert village, you've just hit the jackpot, baby. All you need to do is go around the village, collect an absurd amount of hay bales, and craft all of them in into Wheat Voila, your very own emerald machine. The only downside to trading with villagers is that you'll be running out of emeralds very fast. So if you're a bit of a cheater like me, change the difficulty of your world to hard with a slash difficulty command and low a zombie to a villager with the best trades. Once the villager gets zombified, trap him in an iron block's place a bed and start stuffing him with golden apples and potions. Now you've got yourself the best deals on the planet. Although this does feel kind of wrong, what's better than food, free food, and you can get this easily if you use a campfire to cook it because this uses zero fuel. I know I'm being a cheapskate here, but a penny saved is a penny earned. Am I right? You can even attach a hopper to the campfire and always have food ready for you. Be honest, how many times have you died at the worst time possible and lost everything? So if you don't want to end up like Filser, here's a trick to get infinite health and save all your goodies. First, eat an enchanted golden apple and follow that up immediately with a plain golden apple. Waits for the absorption effect to run out and then do this all over again. Do this correctly and even the ender dragon can't do anything to you. Okay? Maybe you can. But you get the point. One of Minecraft's most valuable objects is ender pearls. Unfortunately, getting them can prove to be quite difficult because of a certain someone. But I'll let you in on a secret. You can fix this problem in seconds. All you need to do is build a massive hole, like so, and build a tower right above it. When you're in the end, dimension. This should be at least three blocks high. This is because endermen are roughly the same heights as this. So once they fall in, they can't even touch you. Oh, come here, you cutie, look. He's harmless. Ah, I spoke too soon. Look at how boring this armor looks and look at it now. Did you see how much of a difference having an armor trim makes? And my personal favorites are the silence. Some water armor trims, but when it comes to looting them from ancient cities, my luck is straight up horrible. No stay away from me anyway. There are a few things you can do to maximize both your loot and safety in ancient cities. One of these is always using a recovery compass to make sure that your loot is never last. And you can continue from where you left off secondly. Only massive noobs search for ancient cities manually just head on over to Chunk Base and, and plug in your weld seed to find all the ancient cities next to you. But oh, isn't this cheating? Hey, we want to get rich. All right, who cares about EICs? You might not believe me but it's possible to x-ray through the entire ocean without downloading any external help. All you need is a potion of night vision. Shug this down and immediately go into your settings to turn your brightness to 50. This allows you to see for miles without the danger of Mojang and Al living you in second finding. Ocean monuments, geodes, strongholds, and ultimately insane. Amounts of treasure has never been easier. Alerting skull sensors is one of the most horrifying experiences in the game. And there's a huge probability that you'll die and lose all your goodies. But this is easily fixed by setting up an infinite sound machine. Just place down a skull sensor, redstone repeater, and trapo. 
Not only does this prevent the warden from chasing you, but it will give you enough time to sweep through the entire ancient city. Why the hell does this work so well? I bet you never knew how weird coal generation really is. Usually, Minecraft creates two batches of coal per chunk, with each batch existing at different Y values. One of these exists between Y, 136, and Y, 256, while the other is between Y, 0, and Y, 192. This gives us a perfect estimate for where we can find the most call, which is from Y, 1, 1 to 36, and YAL, 192, since the ranges for both badges will overlap at these values, but most times this generation isn't equal and blobs spawn randomly with the most of them being found at Y, Deer, 96. Now you know exactly what you should be farming it when a warden starts chasing you. Good luck surviving that. So what do you do in a situation like this? Well, you're going to have to make sure your armor is enchanted with Swift Sneak 2 or higher, which will allow you to get away. However, you still need to be careful of the Warden's ranged attack, because that thing is no joke. And if you have the time, pull down your rendered distance down to two chunks. The moment you stop hearing his footsteps means that he's far enough and will most likely calm down. I'm finally safe. Contrary to popular belief, Growing crops isn't as simple as just smacking down a few seeds into the ground. It's actually a technique that goes into how you plant them from your water source move out. Four blocks diagonally, and then from this one, continue tiling until you're almost two blocks ahead of your water source, then start tiling in the opposite direction until you have an almost checkerboard pattern like this. Now I know this looks insanely cursed, but it's the most efficient way to farm. And since these need at least a night level of nine to grow properly, don't forget to throw on a few torches. Don't mind me and my infinite supply of melons. You should always have a hoe that is enchanted with Fortune 3 when farming, which will allow you to quite literally triple the rate at which you can get food. For example, you can get up to nine melon slices for each melon block farmed. This enchantment is so broad broken, farming levels can be one of the most timec-consuming aspects of playing Minecraft, especially when you don't have an XP farm starting us. So one of the best ways to get levels while being relatively safe is by farming nether. Quartz in the nether. Not only does this have a 45% chance of spawning meaning, it's literally everywhere, but it is also the best source of farm for experience right after diamond since it'll give you experience ranging anywhere between two to five points. Once you reach higher levels, you might find yourself struggling with experience. So here's how to get infinite XP while using a furnace smelter material like iron. And just as it's done, swap it out with an already smelted iron. The only currency this will cost is your patience. Normally to craft end crystals, you need to have an eye of ender, a gas tier, and seven glass. But what if I told you that you could get it within a fraction of the time with just a little bit of luck in Minecraft 1.9 Snapshot 15W44A? It was possible to obtain end crystals from skeleton trap horses, although finding one is rare, much less annoying than having to deal with the ender and guest. I will never figure out why Mojang ended up removing this. Do they hate us or something call me a weirdo? but I love the sniffers because I'm a massive farmer, so you can imagine my surprise when I found out how to insta-hatch their eggs. All you have to do is place two moss blocks and a sniffer egg in front of a sticky piston. Let this run for 10 minutes, and the moss blocks will now be glitched permanently, allowing you to insta-hatch sniffer eggs. Hey, stop coming after me. Hey, no. I bet you wouldn't believe me if I told you that it's possible to loot ocean monuments, not even entering them. Mark the spots I'm showing you on these pyramid-like structures that are on the outside of the monument. You can pick either side, and all you have to do is place down a door and dig the block under you if you see dark prismarine congratulations because you've just hit the jackpot. This makes finding gold a million times easier. I'm embarrassed to tell you the sheer amount of time I've spent looking for buried treasure with maps that wasn't until I found out about this trick once you're in the chunk. The treasure is located in press F3 plus G, and look at these numbers which are the sub-chunk coordinates. Make sure that the first and last digit are 9 and 9 after that dig straight down, and you've got yourself the easiest loot of your life. Similarly, 
You can do the same thing with strongholds, which have tones of loot, but it's slightly more complicated use, an E of Ender several times to see which chunk the location of the stronghold crosses in this will indicate the general chunk. It is located in, after that, you have to open the same menu and look at the sub-chunk coordinates. Only this time, the first and last digits need to be four. During this helps you find strongholds almost instantly which have a boatload of loot. The only downside is using the Eyes of Ender can get a bit expensive. I didn't even know this one existed, but props to Ickraft MC for fending this. If you discover a suspicious block, you can actually take it back to your base in its entirety. Just dig around the block and go down until you're three to four blocks below. It next make a small hole and fill it with water so that there's a bubble column going upwards to the suspicious block. Finally, break the blocks under the suspicious block so that they fall into the water. All that's left is to wait 30 seconds and it will pop right out. The only thing you need to be careful of is other players eyeing for your loot. Wait, why are they no subscribe before they get it all?